Hi YouTubers, sorry it's been a while since uh, I've done an update, um, not much to report in the way of changes at the moment, everything's uh, still working fine, um, I had two cells which I knew were quite old anyway in the bank which I've replaced um, at the end there, I've just got to compress them with these um, spacers down here. Um, which I'll be doing in the next uh, week or so. So they're, I think they're a thousand amp, um, two volt cells. Yes, they are. Um, I can't remember the rate or which that uh, discharges. Uh, but yeah, they're two new ones there. So I've just got hold of my uh, Variac transformer um, because I didn't have any way of charging individual cells. So I just want to see whether that is a bad cell work then bring it back or whether it's suffered from stratification or not um, so that's a 6 12 volt changeable um, I think it goes up to about 80 80 amps yeah so that's an old fast uh, truck tractor car charger and uh, there's the Variac Transformer, which um, is a bit blurry, I'll just focus that in. So that's outputting about 100 volts AC, which is plugged into there. The battery charger is then plugged into the output of the Variac Transformer. And you'll see here, I'm just going to turn this knob around, but you won't be able to see it in the picture because I want to focus in on the amps here um, I can then govern the output right the way up and I'm just charging at quite a low rate at the moment and the cell that I am the single cell that I'm charging up oh yeah they're the leads that come out of the charger which go directly to the two volt cells and I'm just going to put my head torch on here and hopefully I'm just going to have to take it off otherwise you won't be able to see sorry it's quite dark in this garage at the moment there we go, it's bubbling away anyway um, just got that connected to uh, voltmeter. They're quite little, uh, good little uh, meters. These are. I think they're about sort of 20, 25 quid. Unity. Um, measuring. They measure DC amps by the clamp meter as well, which is quite handy to look at the amps that are going through these cables um, and the charge controller cables. And the cable's going from the battery to and from the inverter as well, so uh, that's quite handy. Um, I think I've gone through the temperature sensor before um, and the fan on the previous video, so I'll leave that for now. And there we are anyway, we're up uh, 2.3 volts, and that's going to stay on charge for a while now. But yeah, that's one of the solutions, uh, and big shout out and thanks to Andy Reynolds. Um, if you look Andy Reynolds up, he's got a, uh, if you are not already subscribed, I highly suggest you do. Um, he's uh, one of the big bloggers, writers for lowimpact.org, and um, he's written quite a few books on various subjects, um, but he's a, uh, a leader in wind and solar. Um, so, yeah, I got this idea um, from from Andy. So, thanks very much, Andy. And yeah, so I have just started off my own business called Off Grid Solar UK, which I'll be looking to install advice um, and sketch out yachts, boats, things like that. Um, running on solar and I've got some interesting contacts coming up for um, infrared heating which will 
potentially be able to run off lithiums etc so yeah that's it for now i'll see if i can do a part two once this um battery's charged up and see if i can bring this other one back to life as well um, but for now the systems run okay as the usual thing this time of year when it goes dark um, taking more and more things off um, the load so that will be the fridge freezer microwave and washing machine in the kitchen um, and potentially the TV and projector will come off when it gets really dark months so uh, yeah that's it for now um, systems still working really really well um, I don't know whether I showed you this bit actually that I upgraded so I kind of decided that when I was charging the car um, I'd put these two cables coming from the, inver in the inverter side both on the positive and negative and also the same on the positive side um, to take through two of these isolators and fuses um, those of you will be with a keen eye will spot that there is a potential flaw here um, that if one of the fuses does blow I'm then restricted still to uh, just the one strand um, but it does spread the load more evenly and I haven't had any issues at all um, so I don't think that's a big deal um, it's very unlikely to uh, to blow because the drawer that I'm looking at is not going to be anywhere near um, 250 amps anyway okay well that's it for now I'm going to do another updated video um, as we progress and um, see you soon